my friends and students, I'm very honoured to be here. Now please raise your hands if you know of a creature that bites to infect another. Yeah, it's just the children really, isn't it? Yeah. What about a creature that bites to kill its prey? Must be more. Or a creature that drinks blood. Ah, now what I am about to tell you is shocking, terrifying, yet it is, I regret to say, true. There lives in this world of living, breathing men and women a creature that is dead, yet still lives. <laughs> the Nos old and, and strong and brave, but also tries to remain. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Excuse me, could you direct me to the railway station, please? Yes, of course, it's that way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, where are you going, good sir? I'm making a very long business trip all the way across Europe to the Carpathian Mountains. Ooh. A little late. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be very dull, but I should be staying in a castle. Ooh. Much better. <laughs> Which should be jolly interesting. So wish me luck. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you very much. The friend of our doctor, Mr. Jonathan Harker. Now, remember what I told you. Follow this man at all times and try to keep him safe. Try to remain invisible, though, so that he can't see you, you all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, just follow him. Follow him now! <laughs> As my dear fiance Jonathan leaves today to begin his long journey to the land of Transylvania, then joy for the money he will make will allow us to marry. Finally, excitement. For I shall be holidaying here in Whitby with my best friend, Miss Lucy. The time will fly by until my dear Jonathan returns. Ah! My dear husband to me. I see, as usual. I don't know what you find to record. Nothing exciting ever happens to us. Not to me, perhaps, my dear. But you are about to begin the adventure of a lifetime. Well, I'm sure it'll just be tedious travel and boring business. With that in mind, I have some gifts for you. A journal of your own. So you can write down your adventures. Then you can share your memories with us when you return. I'm sure our dear Dr. Stewart our American friend, Quincy Morris, and darling Lord Arthur will want to hear all about your adventures. Honestly, my dear, the four of you are so alike, you could be brothers. The similarities are remarkable. <laughs> yes, it has been said before. I don't see it myself. Here is a portrait of me, and here is one of my best friend, Lucy. Now there is an incredible resemblance. Like sisters, only the hair marks you apart. And the nose. Wouldn't you say I have a prettier nose? Well, I don't know. They look exactly the same to me. Are you sure? Why don't you look again, darling? Oh, yes, I see it now. Your nose is much prettier, my love. <laughs> Poor Lucy. If only she could decide which of our friends to marry. The clever doctor, the gallant American, or the dashing lord. Perhaps... Yeah, I must go. Thanks for the present, and I'll be sure to write as often as I can. Farewell, my love. Last call for passengers! Farewell, darling. Be safe. Oh, right soon. <laughs> Goodbye, England. Transylvania. Here I come. <laughs> has begun. Although our train travelled hundreds of miles, it seemed only moments before we arrived in... Dover! This is Dover! Will all passengers please make their way to the steam ferry? The sea was mercifully calm, and our crossing most pleasant. There wasn't a cloud in the sky to trouble us, as we made our approach to... Calais, passenger for Paris, allez au platform de, platform de. <laughs> Day hurried into 
night, as we sped on, I glimpsed strange shapes out of my window as we passed through the silent countryside, until at last I saw the welcoming lights of Perry, passenger for Berlin, Alain Plovitch, on platform toi. <laughs> and so we went on. Night turned into day, day turned into night, until time and place blurred into one. Berlin, here is Berlin! <laughs> <laughs> then, Vienna, here is Vienna. <laughs> peace be, peace be for Transylvania and the Burger Park! Chap. And so, my dear Mina, I have fun. <laughs> Welcome to our town. Please do follow me for rest and refreshment. Come quick before dark. Uh, thank you, madam. Uh, could you help me, please, with my trunk, as it has all my things in it? Echo! Jakob, come and have sausage! This is my son, Jakob. He will help. He speaks little English, but he is strong. When he was a child, just seven years old, he saw something at night, a terrible creature. He will never forget. And how old is he now? Eight. <laughs> you stay in best hotel, the Golden Krona. You sleep and then you go to a Borgo Pass. Already this letter has arrived for you, so come quick, make no delay. Perhaps we should do as we're told. Banana! <laughs> Thank you for your assistance. Banana! <laughs> Perhaps we should follow your mother. Ah! Banana! Are we nearly there yet? Banana! Welcome to Golden Krona Inn. Very handy for railway station. Please, to sit. This letter arrived for you today. Please, to read. My dear friend, welcome to the Carpathians. Ah, uh, Carpathians! I am anxiously expecting you. I trust you slept well. My carriage will bring you to me in a few hours. I hope you enjoy your stay. Your friend, Dracula. <laughs> what a lovely man. And do you know of him, Count Dracula? Ah, you must not speak his name. He is evil. Nosferatu. You must not meet with him or go to his castle. He is death. <laughs> Are you sure we're talking about the same chap? I mean, could there be two Draculas? No, there is only one. God save us, he is legend here. When children are bad, mother, say to them, If you are bad, Dracula come for you in night. And straight away, child is good. Banana! <laughs> My son Jacob wish to sing you a song that children sing to warn you. Listen! Oh, very well. The walls of Castle Dracula have stood for many a year, and stories of its owner bring us misery and fear. And people, when they visit it, they tend to disappear and are never seen again. So you go to Castle Dracula. So you go to Castle Dracula. So you go to Now 
man didn't speak all the way here. And then he showed me to my room, which is very old-fashioned. And before I could thank him, he disappeared. It's nearly midnight, I think, and I've not yet met my host. I am anxious to conclude my business here as quickly as possible. I feel that this ancient place holds a terrible secret. But I have your picture to look at, which comforts my feeling that I'm being watched again. I bid you welcome, Mr. Hark, to my house. I am Dracula. Pardon, sir. Uh, no, my lord, no, no, your grace. You may call me Count. My fiance Mina and her friend Lucy. Ah, they are so young, so fair, so full of the blood of life. <laughs> Is that what you say in England? <laughs> Suppose you might do. Well, teach me. I need to know all I can of England. You have papers for me. Yes, I have the contracts and details and purchase of deeds. Everything oh, you ask for. Oh, good. I will sign these. Then all is ready. But my friend, I neglect my duties. You must 
Refresh yourself. Please do so. Actually, I think a shave would be a good idea. Then I shall leave you, my friend. Ah, my friend of earth, this castle is old and in some places unsafe. Do not Of course not, Captain. I will return. my mirror. <laughs> what is that about your neck? Oh, this! <laughs> now this was a present from a peasant woman. Do you like Please, this? Please, hide away such badges of superstition. They have no place in my home. Take off that cross and hide it. Co sorry, Count, sorry. Very well, my friend. We both have much to learn. So whilst you are here, do not venture outside these walls. Uh, why not? <laughs> ah, the wolves! The children of the night! Such sweet music they make. Yes, I can see that. <laughs> Their fangs and claws are sharp. Also, you will not see me during the day. I prefer to work at night. If you do leave this room by day, whatever you do, make sure you return by dark. Stay here. Do your work. Write letters, sleep. The time shall soon pass. Uh, now, talking about that count, when do you think it'll be before I can go home? Do not speak of leaving. Who knows when you shall finish? Sleep now. May you have pleasant dreams. My dear Mina, although I have only been here a short time, my nerves are already on edge. This is a horrible place. The howling wolves keep me awake at night. I never see my host by day. He comes to me at night, but never eats or drinks. And then before the moon rises, he leaves, but then he returns, but this time changed. His eyes, red. Oh, to be home again. My friend, you look tired, you must rest. I have come to tell you I have to go away for a short while. Why can't I leave? I've done everything you asked. Soon, my friend, soon. Why not now? There is so much more for you to see here. I want to leave. You know you cannot leave here. Goodbye. Ooh. 
I will find a way to escape. If only I could find a door. <laughs> there must be a way out of here. If only it wasn't so dark. Oh, I say. I haven't been into this room before. <laughs> oh, what a stink. Oh, I'm feeling rather tired. I think I'll have a little nap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, madam. I must have nodded off. Can I help you? You are young and strong. Kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> Local custom, perhaps. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm a married man. Well, nearly. Just one kiss, that is all I ask. Well, I suppose one kiss would be all right. <laughs> Your eyes are so beautiful. So deep. <laughs> Stop! Stop, my bride! He is forbidden to you! He is mine! Until I say he is yours! I am so hungry, am I to have nothing? I'm sure I can find you something tasty nearby. <laughs> Leave us! <laughs> I may have some food left in my room. You fool! She is vampire like me, undead. You have watched me go out at night. Did you not wonder where? No, not really. <laughs> I went out to feast on peasant blood. But now you have helped me find a new source of food. In England. What do you mean? For weeks now. I have had my servants fill boxes like this with soil from my castle to be sent to England. They will be placed in the properties you have bought for me. The boxes are booked upon a ship, the Demeter, from Varna to Vitby. <laughs> I am... Uh, I don't understand. This is how I will travel, safe, in my coffin to England. <laughs> <laughs> that I will begin again, feasting on the blood of the people there. I will create a new race of vampire to serve me. And it is all thanks to you. <laughs> you fiend! You cannot stop me. Your young blood shall feed my bride, and you shall be her servant. Never! Thank you, my young friend. I have saved a box for you. I will stop you. I will find a way. <laughs> and you, he's Friends. Do not think you can save him. You two are trapped in my castle. And my bride is very, very hungry. <laughs> Dear diary, <laughs> I am writing in the dark what appears to be my last words. Count Dracula has revealed his terrible plan to me. He is no ordinary man, but a blood-sucking vampire, a hell fiend who wishes to enslay the world. I cannot stop him, for I am trapped with no hope of escape, and a fate worse than death awaits me. Mr. Harker! Mr. Harker, where are you? Please, God, it is not too late. Hello, who's there? Oh, it, is, it is I! Frau Stoiko from the Golden Crown! I am here to help! Ah, you poor boy! You must get home and warn your friends before it is too late! How did you get here?
here. We watch Castle Dracula by day. We see many boxes being taken. Then today, Dracula's carriage leaves, but no, you. I climb up wall and in through window to find you, to free you. Has the Count bitten you? No, definitely not. Good, then I give you a map to get out of Castle and Transylvania. You get home, warn your friends. Great danger comes to them. You understand? Yes, I know. Good, then leave now while it is day and there are no wolves. And you go too, yes? You follow him, yes? You protect him, yes? Good. <laughs> friend Lucy is engaged to marry the darling Lord Arthur. Poor Mr. Morris and Dr. Seward are heartbroken. But the big news is last night's terrible storm and the strange events that follow. A ship, the Demeter, has been forced onto the beach here and all of its crew must have been washed overboard. All apart from the captain who tied himself to the wheel of the ship and died there. A terrible tragedy. The ship was carrying a cargo of boxes of soil and the only survivor of the voyage was a black dog who leapt from the ship as it struck the beach and ran off into Whitby. Poor creature, it must have been terrifying. It has not been seen since. My dear Jonathan's letters, when they arrive, are full of strange fears. Oh, he seems to be scared and unhappy, but he will not tell me why. Oh, I wish he would hurry home. Mina! Ah, there you are, Mina. Any word from Jonathan? Nothing. Not a word. He wrote so often and now nothing. I'm worried, Jack. Oh, I'm sure I'll be fine. No news is good news, as they say. You're such a good friend. I was very sorry to hear your news. What's that? You know, Lucy. Lord Arthur. Yeah. Marriage. Oh, well that, oh well. All swear in love and war, as they say. He's a good chap, is that Lord Arthur? Dashing, <laughs> handsome. <laughs> I wish I had his looks. <laughs> ah, Jack, when I got your letter, I came straight away, big train. There is something strange here the story of the storm and the ghost ship. Oh, uh, please forgive me, I, I haven't introduced myself. Uh, Professor Abraham Van Helsing. Oh, Professor Van Helsing, Jack speaks very highly of you. My name is Mina. Ah, Miss Mina, who is to marry Jack's friend who is in Transylvania. <laughs> Jonathan Harker, yes, that's right. How do you know? Our friend Jack and I, we write often. He tells me of his friends and their adventures. Uh, but tell me, you have letters from your Jonathan? Yes. Good. Well, well no, I mean, he, he wrote very often, but I, I haven't heard from him in ages. Ah. Uh, and in his letters, um, all is well with him? Yes. Good. Well, no, I mean, he, he seems scared and unhappy, and he, and he won't tell me why. Ah, um, well, um, I'm sure it is nothing. He's, uh, he, he's away from home and misses his meal. <laughs> yes, I'm sure that's it, Professor. I'm, I'm sure that's it. I'm so sorry. This is terribly rude of me, but I'm, I'm late. Um, I'm supposed to be meet, meeting Lucy. We are supposed to be having tea. It was a, a pleasure to meet you. Goodbye, Jack. Goodbye. Jack, when, uh, when Miss Mina mentioned Lucy's name, you looked sad. Lucy is the girl I mentioned. She is to marry my friend, Lord Arthur. Ah, Jack, do not look sad. I have just a thing to take your mind off it. Remember that talk I gave on vampires? Yeah, all rather far-fetched, isn't it? Perhaps, perhaps not. Now, in your letter, you mentioned the ship, the Demeter, driven ashore, the crew vanished, the captain tied to the wheel dead, and the, the dog which ran off. Terrible tragedy. More than you think. And on the ship. Boxes of soil. Odd, is it not? Why odd? Well, why bring soil all the way from the east to England, where already there is much soil? I have no idea, Professor. And a captain, tied to the wheel and dead. But how? Yeah, that was strange. And not a mark on his body, except the two small holes on his neck. Well. That's what the doctor told me. This you did not tell me before. It is as I feared. There is a great danger come to Whitby. Friend Jack, I need your help. Go and find out what has happened to those boxes of soil. Very well, Professor. I'll see where I can find out. Yes. Hurry, Jack, hurry! Before it's too late. Oh, no, it's 
seems my my worst fears have now become realised. Ah, oh, think, think. Ah, my friends and students, you're here. <laughs> now, if you're here, then I'm imagining that you must have escaped from Transylvania. Oh, please answer my questions. Did you go, as I addressed you, to unfollow Jonathan Harker? <coughs> yes. So, so have you been to Transylvania? Yes. And did you go to Castle Dracula? Yes. So have you seen Dracula? Yes. Oh, what did it look like? Red eyes. <laughs> red eyes. Yes, thank you, yes. <laughs> He had red eyes and he had red bits on his cape. And anything else? A black coat. And, and a black coat, yes? Uh, and anything else? And yes? a white face. And a white face. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go through these things because I've got a few minutes to kill here. <laughs> so he had red glasses, was it? A black coat, red inside bits, and a white face. No. <laughs> oh, but who are these? <laughs> so young and in love. Um, do I have the pleasure of addressing Lord Arthur Homewood and his fiancée, Miss Lucy? You do indeed, yeah. sir. And who might you be? Uh, Professor Abraham Van Helsing. Oh, it's Professor Van Helsing. Jack's always talking about you. You're the one who believes in those awful blood-sucking creatures. Oh, you mean bankers, my dear. <laughs> Tomorrow. It will come soon enough, my dear, and all of our friends will be there to see you. Talking of which, our wild American friend, Quincy Morris, arrives by train today. We'd better be there to meet him. We'd better hurry. You go ahead, my dear. I'm going to stay here, record my thoughts in my journal, and plan our special day. <laughs> you and Mina are always scribbling away. <laughs> So alike in so many ways. <laughs> I have a prettier nose. What's that? My nose. Wouldn't you say, I have a prettier nose? Oh, yes. Your nose is much prettier, my love. Well, you write in your journal, but don't stay too long. The evening air is drawing in. Don't want you catching your death. I mean a chip. <laughs> Bye, my love. Oh, dear diary. What a day it has been. I still cannot believe I am to be married. Poor dear Jack cannot hide his disappointment, and I'm sure Quincy will be just as sad, but I am very happy. A strange thing happened last night. I woke from my sleep with a strong feeling I was being watched. I went to my window, and in the moonlight, I could see a great black dog with red eyes staring up at me. Oh, thank you for your concern. I know. <laughs> the was just at my window. Yes. Good evening, oh, dear. Oh. Pardon me for oh. disturbing you. <laughs> oh, I'm terribly sorry. Sir, I didn't see you in the shadows. I should probably go home. Oh, right, then. Thank you so much. You are Miss Lucy. Yes, but I have not met you before, I don't think. I have just arrived after a long journey. My name. Dracula. Oh. I have a friend visiting a castle. Dracula. Perhaps you know. <laughs> I am very sorry, but I am very tired and hungry. You must come to 
tea. I don't drink tea. <laughs> Coffee, perhaps? How exotic. <laughs> no. Permit me a custom of my land. When friends meet, they cheese. <laughs> and they cheat. No, we don't. <laughs> come, come, my dear. What harm could it be? None, I suppose. Yeah. Oh. No! Oh, Lucy, oh, come on now. Don't be sore at me. Why, I ain't sad. Well, Lord, I'll hurry that. Why, there you are, Miss Lucy, and having a nap. <laughs> Wake up, Miss Lucy. It's your good friend Quincy Morris come from America to see you. <laughs> now you wake up, Miss Lucy. Come on now. <laughs> Why? You're as cold as ice. <laughs> now you wake up, Miss Lucy. Come on. <sighs> you ain't hardly breathing at all. Stand aside, foul fiend. Leave this poor girl. <laughs> you are a madman, sir. And I will protect my friend. <laughs> ah! <laughs> this cross, it, it does not distress you. No, it comforts me. Ah, then you are not a vampire. No, I'm an American. <laughs> ah, well, are you the American friend of Dr. Jack? Is it uh, Quincy Morris? That sure is. And you must be that Dutch professor fella he talks That's about. That's right. Oh, I'm afraid we forget this poor girl. Oh, yeah, professor. I think she's caught a cold. <laughs> I fear it may be much worse. Man flu. Quincy, <laughs> <laughs> something has attacked her. Look, look how weak she is. Take her home as, as fast as you can. Okay, professor, come on. Okay. Miss Lucy, I'll take care of you. Quincy, Harry. Harry! Before it's... Yeah! What did he look like this yeah! time? <laughs> Actually, someone said in last weekend's show, Elton John. <laughs> right, so you, you saw him here, and was he wearing the same clothes? Yeah. Well, just remind me, what, what was he wearing? Your face! He was wearing my face. <laughs> no, he wasn't. <laughs> so he was wearing he was wearing black clothes, I think I heard someone say before, yes? No, and, I had a red and, and, he, Oh, he had a red scarf, so he had black clothes and a red scarf and some, was it some glasses and or something? Face. And my face. <laughs> <laughs> A black shirt. And, and my face. <laughs> <laughs> and you saw him here, did you? Yes. 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 And what did he do? He bit her on the neck. He bit her on the neck. And and then, where, where did he bite? Did he say? On the neck. And, and then which way did he go? That way. He went this way. <laughs> well, I just oh. followed my face. <laughs> <laughs> Jack! Jack! Yes, here! Here, Jack! It's not good news. It's Lucy. Quincy Morris, Quincy Morris brought her back. Freezing cold, shivering with a fever, and muttering about some strange figure in black. I noticed she had a mark on her neck. Two small holes and no blood. It was as if her life had been drained from her. She got colder and colder. Despite our efforts, I did all I could. 
she died. Oh, oh you mustn't blame yourself, Jack. Stop that. <laughs> you did everything you could have done. Yeah. 
that to be stored at Whitby Abbey. And then, distribute it to different locations around England. Tomorrow. Oh, then we must hurry. Go, go fetch Lord Arthur. And, and Miss Reader. Oh, and, and the American chap, Quincy, Quincy Morris. Okay, I'll see you in the army. And you, my friends, you have already escaped the vampire's evil clutches. You must help me now. I'm going this way, please, everybody. Follow me! Follow me! Oh, it's really, really dumb. You weren't expecting to join you.